Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So I gotta talk about Ripple XRP and the difference between speculative volume and real utility volume. And yes, there's a way to figure out which is which. So first I wanted to touch on this. Ripple CEO confirms rumor on MoneyGram's use of XRP, says Bitcoin and crypto actively remains largely speculative. So this from Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse. So he's confirming months of speculation that MoneyGram is directly responsible for an increase of XRP volume in Mexico. In an interview on the FinTech Beat podcast, Garlinghouse says MoneyGram and additional clients of Ripple are contributing to a 50% boost in XRP transactions by sending dollars into Mexico using XRP as a bridge. So he says, it's a public ledger. You can see where volumes are growing, contracting, and we've talked publicly about it, partly because of MoneyGram as well as some other customers who are using what we call on-demand liquidity. The product is moving capital so that you don't have to pre-fund accounts. And so he talks about the volume increase, and uh, guys, you can see this on the charts here. Uh, overall, Garlinghouse says that the use of crypto assets, including Bitcoin and XRP, remains largely speculative, and he believes it may be a long time before cryptocurrencies are directly used by customers. So before I go on with this, I'm going to bring you uh, bring your attention to Tony Valentino's tweet here from a few days ago, and I thought this tied in nicely. This from Tony Val 76476318 on Twitter. So with regards to speculative versus real world utility, he screen grabs this. I don't know who this was from. Uh, but uh, so you, you can see here the number of uh, XRP uh, trade volume, total XRP trade volume and ledger trade volume and ledger payment volume. And um, so there's obviously there's a difference between speculation and utility. And we're always asking ourselves, what is the real world utility volume and what is the speculation volume? Well, there's a way to figure that out. So we all know what speculation is versus a utility. Uh, I'm just going to start down here. It is clear XRP's price is nearly 100% speculative valuation at the time of this writing, which also means there's very little utility pricing. Uh, it is possible for XRP to go to near zero in value in a purely speculative environment. How can we tell what is speculative versus utility? Well, very easily. Number one, speculation transactions. So guys, listen to this very closely. Here's where you can tell whether the volume we're seeing is speculative or real world utility. So mostly speculative transactions mostly shows up in the markets, but not on the XRPL. When you buy and sell on the markets, you're not really hitting the XRP ledger. You're just trading in a virtual environment on the market. So of course, you'll not see your trades in the ledger. And this is a good thing because we don't want to flood the XRPL with all these millions of trades that wouldn't make any sense. This type of activity can be seen on typical sites like CoinMarketCap and Live CoinWatch. This kind of activity will not reflect in the next point. So number two, utility transactions or payment. These are actual movements of XRP on the XRP ledger, which can be seen on the payments chart at Ripple's excellent chart site. And so he links it there. And guys, we've seen the uh, the XRPL in real time. We've seen uh, transactions go over the ledger. One very important aspect to understand about XRapid that's unique to it is that XRapid drives both market and ledger transactions in a ratio of two to one because there's two exchange transactions on one ledger transaction for every X rapid transfer. In this way, it's possible to figure out approximately how much of the current price of XRP is due to speculation or utility. So you guys getting this? Uh, the spec transactions are going to happen on the exchanges. The real world utility is going to happen on the ledger. That is where we can see the difference. Now, uh, we're thinking, well, why isn't price going up because of real world utility? Well, right now, the volume for real world utility is so low that, uh, you know, essentially they're trading XRP back and forth for those low volume transactions. I mean, we, we, we boast that, oh my God, look at all these numbers. Look at how much is going through. But realistically, guys, this is a drop in the bucket for what is what, what will come once once cryptocurrency regulations come to pass. This is like the tester, okay? The calm before the storm. But anyway, I wanted to thank Tony Valentino for posting this. This is a great tweet uh, because it really does clear up a lot of things. So I'm just gonna go back to this. Uh, and this from Brad Garlinghouse himself on XRP itself. And really, I would say crypto broadly, I have publicly said before that 99.9% .9 of all crypto trading is speculation today. The amount of real utility you're talking about is really, really low. And that's true within the XRP community as well. So, you know, we're seeing these numbers and despite the fact that, you know, we're seeing, wow, there's, there's a lot of volume going through XRP. Guys, really, it's not that much volume. 
when you think about how much volume could be going through XRP. What's the volume going through Swift right now? Now, if you take Swift, you close down shop, and you transplant that volume into XRP, wow, are we going to really see a demand for XRP digital assets? So again, guys, you're seeing these up and down movements, up and down, crypto going up, crypto going down, XRP following Bitcoin a little bit, you know, moving to, you know, from 29 cents to 30 and a half cents, whatever, little. This is small potatoes compared to what will come down the pipe. And not only that, guys, Brad Garlinghouse is also confirming this. 99.9% .9 of all crypto trading is speculation. We are not seeing market makers making XRP markets as of yet. The ecosystem just isn't big enough yet, uh, but that will come to pass eventually. Here's Michael on Twitter. That's um, uh, at Val5Links. Uh, brought this up. I thought this was interesting. The Ontario Securities Commission has ruled to allow crypto fund manager 3IQ to issue a prospectus for its prospective ETF signaling that Canada's top securities regulator may be about to approve the launch of the nation's first Bitcoin ETF. Okay, so linking to this article here. So on Wednesday, just yesterday, 3IQ planned its cross-ended BTC fund, the Bitcoin fund, uh, and has moved to the final stages on judgment with the OSC and that it expected it would receive clearance to launch on a major Canadian stock exchange as early as, guys, this quarter. Now, this is important because uh, I think that uh, we could see money flooding into Bitcoin. It is kind of a shame that it is happening in a Canadian market, a very uh, a much smaller market than if it were to happen in the United States. Uh, but this article goes on to say, beating the U.S. to the punch on the coveted ETF. The news will come to many as a watershed moment in Bitcoin's history after years upon years of failed efforts to launch a BTC ETF in the United States. Traditionally, the expectation has been that uh, a Bitcoin ETF could inject tens, if not hundreds of billions of dollars into Bitcoin's market capitalization by seeing the original cryptocurrency incorporated into mainstream financial products like retirement accounts and mutual funds alone, a multi-trillion dollar market. So... Um, you know, it's bittersweet news in my opinion, because sure, it's great that Canada is getting it, that, that they are approving a, a Bitcoin ETF, but realistically the markets in Canada are much smaller than American markets. I think, uh, the Bitcoin ETF would get way more exposure, pumping way more money into the Bitcoin market capitalization, as this article suggests. And what does that do for speculative trading? Well, it, uh, well, it will increase all coins. If Bitcoin, if money was pouring into Bitcoin, you, you know what happens, right? In a spec market, money pours into other cryptocurrencies uh, and then we see spec price spikes. Simple as that. Nevertheless, uh, great article here. So thanks so much, Michael on Twitter for that. And then I saw XRP underscore Canada and you guys remember this, the Bitcoin time traveler. Well, he has confessed that he's not actually from the future. <laughs> That's right. If you guys thought there was a real time traveler out there telling you about Bitcoin from the year 2025. Oh God. All right. It was a fun story. I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to admit I, I got into it myself. Didn't necessarily believe it, but you know, it's kind of fun to just have uh, fun with this kind of thing. So for those of you guys who do not know about this, this is the Bitcoin time traveler. He came from the year 2025 and he gave some um, predictions about Bitcoin. And, uh, you know, a lot of his predictions were in line with the uh, Bitcoin price movement. Uh, so he posted this, when did he post this? Six years ago. And he said that, you know, Bitcoin will, will 10, 10x in price essentially every three or four years. Anyway, this is his original post down here, but he has since, um, he has since updated his post. So this is from October 27th, 2019. And guys, he makes a case for XRP. Uh, albeit indirectly, nevertheless, I just want to read you guys this. Bitcoin should not be treated as an investment. It should be recognized as a speculative negative sum game. The Bitcoin system currently consumes an estimated of $3.6 billion worth of electricity on an annualized basis. Just to update the ledger that contains a record for everybody's transactions, this enormous consumption of electricity is indirectly paid for by the people who invest their savings in Bitcoin. As a consequence, money is continually leaking from the system. As a Bitcoin investor, you're paying for Chinese businesses to waste electricity by solving an abstract math problem that is designed to get continually more difficult. Besides ensuring that many people lose vast sums of money while a small minority of early adopters is enriched, 
Bitcoin causes tremendous ecological damage in an era when we should be focusing as a society on reducing our carbon emissions. The Bitcoin developers responsible for updating the protocol appear to have no genuine intention to introduce code changes that reduce the ecological damage caused by Bitcoin mining. So my suggestion has to be to sell your Bitcoins, which indirectly has an effect of reducing the ecological damage caused by Bitcoin mining. Theft and loss of coins. So he goes into theft and loss of coins. I'll, uh, I'll skip that part. But he continues by saying the other cryptocurrencies share most of Bitcoin's flaws. Resource waste, no protection against theft or loss, vulnerable to market manipulation, etc. But most importantly, what sets cryptocurrencies apart from proper investments is that these coins don't produce anything. If you invest in a company and that company can use the money to deliver more products, uh, if you buy silver, gold, Bitcoin, or Beanie Babies, you're hoping someone else will come along one day and pay more money for it. History has shown that people who invest money in the stock market will generally end up witnessing much higher returns than people who buy gold. With that said, I hope this story has entertained you and helped you to recognize some of the problems our society would face if we ever witnessed widespread adoption of Bitcoin or similar digital currencies. So his number one criticism of Bitcoin is that it is environmentally very, very unfriendly because of the mining process. We've heard this numerous times before. Proof of work just won't work. Pardon the pun for the future. Okay, we have serious, serious environmental issues that uh, that are, you know, plaguing the globe. Uh, population around the world is now over seven and a half billion people. Okay, and Bitcoin was designed to continually use more and more electricity. It's just not sustainable. The other thing is, he's saying it's a zero sum game. You know, you're assuming somebody will just pay more for a Bitcoin uh, and come around and just pay you more for one versus what you paid for it. And essentially guys, this indirectly points to cryptocurrencies like XRP that are A, solving real world problems, B, have been pre-mined so there's no proof of work, and C, have a clear cut use case. If you invest in uh, an alternative cryptocurrency that doesn't follow uh, Bitcoin's, um, you know, the, the same patterns of Bitcoin, so, you know, not a proof of work coin, something like XRP, uh, you, you are more likely, in my opinion, and he is indirectly saying this as well, succeed with your investment. So there's no proof of work, it's pre-mined, it's efficient, it's environmentally friendly, and not only that, it has a clear cut use case. There's no speculation with XRP. All XRP will do is power the world of, uh, well, for now, cross-border transactions and eventually uh, more applications, hopefully down the road for the financial world. So he's not saying it, but really saying that if he had a choice, he'd uh, likely stick with an investment that is likely to hold value in the future. Anyways, guys, that's just my opinion, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.